Hello everyone, today we talk about the Alamanni, uh, one of the most important people that inhabited um, Western Europe during the Migration Era. Um, sometimes we had this impression that the Migration Era has to be uh, marked by extremely long migrations, geographically speaking, thinking about the Goths or the Vandals that were uh, true globe trotters, but totally true there were other migrations that albeit um, <coughs> less extended um, territorially had nevertheless a great um, important, a great impact um, in the history uh, of Europe and in other, <coughs> other areas um, and, and uh, really contributed to redefine um, strongly the, uh, the local identity. And the Alemanni are really one of, of these peoples. Um, generally speaking you can trace um, <coughs> uh, um, a different um, uh, range of motion of peoples in Germany, um, um, whether they were in, in the west and the east largely, uh, in the sense that the western Germans, even those that we don't define in that fashion just because there are actually there is a linguistical or cultural group that sometimes is addressed as western germans like the franks even 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 the saxons um <coughs> number that but i'm talking you know in a strictly longitudinal um different um, differentiation here um <coughs> the germans who lived uh, on the rhine generally i say generally tended to move at, at closer range, mm. uh, for many reasons. Um, <coughs> probably the fact that gold that was right there was more um, was was actually very um, um, fertile and, and rich land, even after the wars that had followed um, during the crisis of the uh, of the Roman Empire and the same migration era. While the Western Germans uh, tended to go east. And to and and first of all to travel more, but also to mm, become characterized by a, by a much more nomadic um, um, cultural mm, aspects um, <coughs> that probably gave them also the means to to make longer longer journeys. But I, I don't want to stress that too much. And the Alamanni fit into the first group. Um, first of all, who were the Alamanni? Well. Um, what we're talking about here is a so-called confederation. Um, <coughs> confederation basically means it's an it was an alliance of tribes, of single tribes, some of which we um, uh, we already know from mm, you know the, the past century, from, from the previous centuries that had interacted, for instance, with the Romans. There were f seemingly and famously the Catti tribe that had had an important role during the, the Roman uh, invasions of Germany, um, you know, the, the rise of uh, the, the, the um, <coughs> of, uh, of Armenians, etc. Um, um, and, and other tribes uh, uh, whose origin is, is a bit more obscure because relatively speaking we 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 don't know much about these peoples, you know. And, um, telling the truth, that regarding the ancient world, most of which we know um, is something coming from the Roman perspective, and uh, and the Romans didn't have a uh, a, a scientific, um, you know, understanding of of of, of the world thing, uh, how you know what was beyond the boundaries of their empire most of the times. Also, because these groups were <coughs> were highly fluid in many ways from a political point of view. Ethnically speaking, also in this sense, were not strictly defined, so um, we have a pretty foggy understanding of many um, uh, of many of, of these people's history because of the, the of the fact that we saw them f not from the lenses of the same people who didn't leave anything written at that point, but from the Roman perspective, from the Roman lenses, um, and th the origin of the Alemanni in this sense is quite. Mm, it's quite foggy as well because uh, for other <coughs> um, for other confederations it's um, mm, even not that often it's more relatively easy to to spot who was who or at least from which region they came um, in in the in the case of the Alamanni there's a bit of a um, of a difficulty because um, 
uh, because of the same nature of the sources. So this group um, comes to be for the first time defined as such in uh, at the beginning of the third century AD because the, the Roman Emperor Caracalla um, uh, waged war on them um <coughs> and, uh, and, and by defeating them he gained the surname cognomen in Latin um, Alamannicus uh, which was definitely the, the, the name that uh, defined th this confederation already at that time so it already existed as such and, and it was so much um, you know um, important to, to even become the surname of a Roman emperor um, this is, um, I'm not really sure about this, but um, <coughs> the Romans kind of used the surnames uh, after they gained victory of certain people, sometimes in very vague ways, like the, the, the normal surname for having defeated the Germanic people was normally the, the Germanicus, mm? or Germanicus, according to which pronunciation you want to do. Um <coughs> so the specificity of this title actually tells in favor of the importance of this confederation up to this point, um, already at this point, which which is remarkable because the beginning of the third century is kind of uh, an or of an early time. Seemingly the Alamanni had um, um, joined, I mean they, they had become a confederation by uh, imitating the Franks, who were also another um, confederation and uh, probably the oldest one we know, I believe, aside the Swabians. Um, and uh, who <coughs> were operating uh, at close distance because essentially the Alamanni at this point are spotted on the um, uh, Main River which at that time in, in its lower part was on the um, so-called Roman Limes that is the, the border of the Roman Empire uh <coughs> not very distant from the Rhine at all also because the Main flows into the River Rhine um, and the Franks were just above, um, so uh, and they were essentially harassing the Romans on the uh, on the Rhine frontier, uh, launching raids and stuff like that. The Franks would have evolved uh, eventually as kind of friends of allies of the Romans. The Alamanni instead were some of the um, fiercest um, <coughs> uh, enemies of Rome uh, at this point and there was also a lot of warfare going on between them and the Romans as you can see from Caracalla. The story wants that Caracalla had invaded the Alamanni because the Alamanni actually had uh, um, asked help to Rome uh, because they were divided and uh, it was normal for the Germans at this time to call um, um, the Roman Empire settling their own internal political problems because they were naturally gravitating around um, the Roman Empire and they consider it, um, you know, n not an enemy uh, imminently, but you know, a, um, a power to to interact with. Um, but Caracalla seemingly um <coughs> exploited the same Alemannic weakness to um, um, take out essentially part of the. Of, of their nobility in killing uh, some famous warriors of theirs, uh, <coughs> reason for which the the, the Alamanni, <laughs> you know, obviously were not very happy, and since Caracalla got ill at a point, the Alamanni claimed to have launched an X on the emperor, for which the emperor um, uh, himself said it was safe because he had um, he had called his uh, protector spirits. And Car Caracalla even sent to punish the Alamanni afterwards. Uh, <laughs> he was not content, evidently. Um, the um, legion, the second legion, the Traiana Fortis, that from uh, defeated the Alamanni and from that mm, point onwards um, assumed the surname uh, Germanica, or Germanica, as you want to call it. So um, I it's fascinating also here that the emperor got the Alamannicus surname and the legion who defeated the Alamanni uh, Germanic, uh, Germanica or Germanica. So, but besides this, um, you know, what were actually the Alamanni as such? Um, first of all, we uh, we have the idea that uh, this confederation, in spite of the scanty knowledge, was made up of the tribes of the Catti, um, who were Western Germans, the so-called um, uh, Narcites, I believe. Uh, Narcite, sorry. Uh, 
in Latin or Nasitae, uh, were seemingly um, uh, um, a tribe of, of Swabian origin. The Utungi, uh, the Ermenduri, um, who the Ermenduri seemingly were also part of the um, uh, Swabian um, Swabic Confederation, and in fact, they seemingly came um, to be part of the Alemannic Confederation from the regions of today's uh, Brandenburg in Germany. So, in the northeast of Germany, where the Swabi were were located broadly. Um, <coughs> and uh, and the Semnones also who were uh, who were still um, part of I think of the of the Swabian uh, yeah of the Swabian Confederation. So it seems that the Alamanni, for for as much as we can know, uh, were sort of, of of a part of the Swabi. The Swabi had been uh, historically speaking the major. Um, and, and only Germanic confederation for a very long time to work uh, very famous Germanic tribes being part of the Suebi, famously the, the Marcomanni and the Langobards. Um, but at the beginning of the migration era with the events that were set in motion during the, the, twel uh, the second and the third century AD, um, the, the confederation kind of collapsed and seemingly parts of um, of this Suebi uh, moved from the Elbe River towards the southwest of Germany, and parts of these um, um, of this group uh, seemed to have made up the larger part of the Alemannic Confederation, that obviously also contained other ethnic groups, as far as we know. Um, first of all, um, the Alemanni uh, were pressing on the Roman frontier in the southwest and eventually made it into 160 to occupy the um, uh, Germania, uh, the Germania uh, Superior, in the region that is known, uh, was known um, uh, from the Romans as um, the Agri Decumatus, that it's in roughly in today's um, southwestern Germany and uh, northern Switzerland and Alsace. Um, that um, that was inhabited originally speaking by Celtic population, so there were a lot of um, Celtic Romanized uh, elements that entered into uh, the Alemannic Confederation for sure, and we cannot exclude um, you know especially at the peak of the uh, the uh, of, of the m migration movements in in the following centuries that probably peoples of very different. Uh, ethnicity um, came to be part of the Alemannic Confederation. Um, it, it suffices to see the famous Niederzotzingen uh, helm that has been found in, uh, I think Niederzotzingen is, is in Bavaria or something like there, uh, that was occupied by the, the Alemanni. I'm not even sure, it, it's, um, it's completely sure whether that's an Alemannic burial, but it, it's normally indicated as such. And what you see is this uh, lamellar helmet that you can find in many other peoples like the Longbirds, the Goths, that uh, was a typical Eastern um, fashion. And when I say Eastern, I mean the Eurasian steppes <coughs> and the um, Indo-European and Turkic um, um, elements that inhabited it. So, an element of very um, of the steppes, so of nomadic peoples that, at a certain point, with the with the Hunnic uh, invasions, um, 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 basically fled, started f uh, fleeing, and mass quite disorderly towards the west, and were integrated by. Uh, the Germans I in Germany proper. So um, this is really all we know because um, we we know obviously also where the Alamanni uh, eventually spread, but also in in here geographically speaking, we don't have the exact uh, extension of, of of what the borders of the Alamannic Confederation actually were. Uh, there is this area that is comprehended. Uh, essentially between the, the Swiss Plateau, Alsace, um, and um, Bavaria and part of Austria. But, um, so this subalpine area, practically in parts of Central Europe, um, seemingly the Alemanni also expanded uh, a little further north, uh, northwest <coughs> at a point. Um, so this is all we know. And the problems we have in being more precise is that 
um, these Germanic peoples uh, do not really had uh, are, are not really traceable with with ease because what uh, mm, they didn't write so we have a very few uh, documentary sources about them um, we have archaeology but the problem with archaeology is that what you receive from you know the archaeological data is just a great homogeneous group of Germans that might uh, have maybe some slight differentiation within it um, in terms of cultural influences from a certain area or not but that are for the rest very very largely um, homogeneous um, it's difficult sometimes obviously also to to date a certain um, a certain um, archaeological recovery so basically we know that at a certain point roughly there was someone there that produced that the tool that weapon that thing we can we can document archaeologically speaking but we don't know to whom it belonged so um, the Alemanni here obviously there are certain um, uh, sir, there is uh, a certain degree of certainty by crossing the various historical data that certain um, uh, I don't know what's the word in English wait, <laughs> wait a second because I'm really circling around um, yeah finds and evidences that that can be uh, attached to the Alamanni but who cannot be uh, um, that that don't make the dual structure uh, clear uh, in absolute terms, um, but we know quite a lot by the, about the Alamanni. Generally speaking, first of all, the fact that they fought intensely against the Romans, um, as we um, as is, uh, as we were saying, there was a lot of uh, push uh, towards the uh, the uh, Roman border that at a certain point had to be abandoned. The Agri Decumates where this area that the Romans had co um, colonized uh, during, the, if I'm not wrong, the second century um, AD or probably slightly before and that kind of closed the uh, a gap that existed between the uh, Rhine and, and Danube's um, frontier um, <coughs> and, um, um, and it, it's roughly today's um, Baden-Württemberg in Germany and part of Switzerland and Alsace, um, <coughs> and this was a region uh, that was previously inhabited by Celtic populations that eventually had seen probably a certain mix with uh, other um, Germanic, uh, some Germanic tribes that were coming from the north, but eventually the Romans conquered it. Um, this meant that the area, as it's still, mm, mm, you know, if you go to, to southwestern Germany you can see that quite well, um, had uh, a lot of Roman infrastructures. Uh, there were a lo also a lot of thermal areas. Uh, Baden, for instance, means bath. Um, baths, plural. Um, and I it's full of that in Baden-Württemberg. It gives even the the um, the name <laughs> to the region. And those are originally Roman thermae that were built by the Romans there. And it's um these were quite intensely Romanized um, regions. Um, and um, and the Alamanni came to occupy uh, these um, by substantially getting in turn Romanized. The Romans had abandoned that region because they couldn't ha handle it anymore militarily. There were other problems, so um, the Alamanni just f fitted into this gap. Uh, it, it was something probably quite, um, uh, you know, it happened at a, at a quite uh, small scale in the sense that we don't have to think of the Alamanni moving all at once into this new place. These were clans and bands that progressively came to settle into these areas um, and got strongly Romanized in turn. Uh, in fact, um, uh, the Alamanni military um, at this point uh, during the, uh, the, uh, the third uh, and fourth century um, 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 owns uh, a lot of uh, Roman elements. Telling the truth, um, the Alemanni were some of the most uh, fiercely aggressive Germanic peoples at this point towards the empire. They they kind of always pushed uh, against the Romans, um, and they based their strength over on um, mm, over uh, a system that is quite mm, 
you know, characteristically Germanic, uh, especially the, uh, of the Western Germans, that is, very strong bodies of infantrymen, uh, very thickly packed formations of, of warriors who launched charges against uh, the Roman legionaries and tried to, to break them uh, through this impetus. Um, the point is that the Romanization of the Alemanni had brought these guys to uh, keep themselves sometimes with Roman armor. Um, there was definitely an elite at this point that wore um, mail or, or scale armor um, and uh, and uh, and was therefore heavily armored just like the, the Norman and uh, the Romans at this point um, and uh, obviously not all the people uh, was equipped like that but incidentally the Romans also were not equipped all like that like at, like at the time of the uh, of Augustus just for giving uh, an example, but they had at that point uh, um, an elite that was the mobile army, um, and then there were uh, other uh, garrison troops that were usually, on average, less well equipped than the mobile army, and and therefore, when clashing with the Alemanni, the Romans were sometimes similar in equipment, and the Alemanni had adopted too um, the so-called angon, which was a kind of heavy javelin that had the same degree of, pen uh, ter mm, of penetration of the uh, Roman pilum, w which wasn't um, used anymore at that point, um, uh, but that, um, however, uh, gives you the idea of uh, the kind of weapon that they had learned how to use mm, uh, with efficacy um, before the assault by launching the, these uh, uh, Angoni all together and uh, trying to, to weaken, to soften up the, the first ranks of the enemy that are the, the most important for the unity of the formation and to assault uh, them, hoping to break them. Um, and the Alemanni in this sense were, were quite a formidable uh, military machine that the Romans were, telling the truth, able to defeat um, almost every time because they had, they were also developing, especially after the Constantinian reforms, uh, a very sophisticated new uh, army, contrary wise to, to the, uh, the stereotype that the, the late Roman armies were weaker, no. Especially during the 4th century, they were quite, um, quite remarkable, they were a remarkable uh, military machine that had to deal um, uh, with, with much more aggressive enemies than the, the Empire had seen before, with success, by the way, um, or largely at least, um, and um, and therefore um, um, there is a, a kind of very warlike characterization of these peoples. There were other confederations, other tribes that were weaker um, and didn't have this strength. We don't know much about the Alemanni, but from their um, relation, <laughs> I'll say, um, with the Empire, we understand that they kind of had uh, a very strong, um, um, uh, they, they were a very strong confederation and they, they were quite aggressive and characterized uh, essentially by this. Um, and um, the, the story, um, uh, you know, the military history at this point is, uh, is kind of, um, you know, uh, of checkable. There were uh, several <coughs> uh, battles. There's the Battle of, of uh, Milan, where the Emperor Gallienus defeated the, uh, the Alemanni. The Alemanni joined at a certain point the Goths to, um, to launch offensives um, uh, even across the Alps into northern Italy. So here they got um, um, uh, the, the, they got stopped several times. The, the in, in 268, the Alemanni suffered by Roman hand a uh, very uh, heavy defeat at the lake of uh, Garda uh, between Lombardy and uh, Veneto. Um, then, um, three years later, there is a series of outer battle in to which um, Aurelian defeated repeatedly the Alemanni invading Italy. Um, and then the, the, the Alemanni basically stopped uh, invading um, the Italian peninsula and were kind of more contained uh, because mm, uh, by the end of the 3rd and beginning of fourteenth, uh, the 4th century, the Roman Empire recovers uh, strengths. 
um, and the alemanni are uh, basically checked in their own uh, surroundings and the, the, the most famous um, um, battle that the alemanni fought uh, against the romans was renownedly the battle of strasbourg um, uh, the, the Alemanni had basically invaded uh, the Rhineland and the Emperor uh, Julian um, repelled them successfully. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a famous battle because seemingly the Alemanni were, uh, were quite many and the Romans um, tried to, um, to fight them by using heavy cavalry. Uh, one of the few uh, major battles in which the Romans used cataphracts in Western Europe uh, however, renownedly, uh, the Roman cataphracts were a disaster this <laughs> this age, um, and they uh, and in fact they were routed by the Alemanni, and they fled. So that the Roman uh, legionary infantry had to ca take care of the Alemanni, and uh, through its um, famous discipline and and uh, uh, and. Uh, and and training they they managed to contain even the the impetus of the very uh, fierce um alamanni um after here you have um there are other victories that because the alamanni kept making invasions at this point it, it was normal for these confederations every once in a while to launch a raid over the roman uh territory because it was something so big that um you know, the Romans had difficulty to 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 keep safe in every and, and to to defend in every single place. Um, so every time that there was a kind of political weakness of the, uh, of the empire, the, uh, the Germanic confederations would take the chance to to launch um, um, a very very consistent raids that were conceived essentially for their loot. Um, these were usually r we're talking about sort of semi-nomadic peoples. They, w they weren't... Uh, they, they were starting progressively to sedentarize, but loot uh, in, a, in a primitive economy like theirs was definitely uh, a very good um, a very good income <laughs> way of um, a, a way of acquiring uh, material wealth and, uh, uh, and and the Roman Empire was a, was a rather hefty cow to crop. So um uh, mm, uh it's easily explained why why the way they did that um but um uh, at this point um towards the 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 fifth century um there's a lot of uh things going on because there are waves of other peoples that start passing through germany and um um and um there's also a certain trouble uh for for everyone to contain the situations, the Huns are are arriving um, in some, um, uh, and and they are like the nightmare of the wall of the wall of Europe at this point, especially with the Germans who were the the ones who were getting overrun. So the Alemanni probably stopped uh, to to <coughs> um, at this point and kind of had to deal with the Hunnic domination and therefore integrating refugees and. Uh, relating themselves with the Huns. Uh, but there is a kind of... Uh, and, and, and the whole uh, international situation changes because basically the the Western Roman Empire grows increasingly weak. There are new peoples who start settling in Gaul, uh, in, um, um, including the Franks. Um, and, uh, and the same Alemanni take the chance to expand a little bit um, westwards. Um, so uh, what happens is uh, the um, uh, uh, the Alemanni uh, uh, even the Alemanni interestingly f uh, fought um, um, with the Huns at the battle of the Catalanian fields. So you can understand that they were seeing um, the Hunnic um, um, presence not just as an as an imposition but uh, as a sort of chance to to expand also for their own interests um and and it's interesting that the alemanni still sided with with the enemies of 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 the empire while there were other tribes like uh the the um, uh, the franks uh and and the visigoths who sided instead with the um uh, with the empire. 
Um, and, uh, and this is important probably also to explain why uh, the Alemanni remained largely detached from things like Christianization. Um, the the Alemanni were were Christianized quite late in time, and um, and and and, uh, and they remained kind of um, and th that this is important to explain, especially the relation with the empire, because uh, every Germanic tribe that wanted to enter in in a certain relation with the empire tended at this point, since the empire was Christian, to convert to Christianism. Uh, the only one, the only Germans who converted directly to Catholicism, so Roman Catholicism, uh, um, were the Franks, who were in this sense the heralds of the uh, of the empire. Without th they thought themselves as sort of uh, continuators of the Roman rule um, in Roman name in Gaul. Um, the other Germans would uh, normally convert to Arianism. The Alemanni weren't extremely far away from Christianized lands anyhow chose to remain pagan. Uh, the Burgundians were Christian at this time, uh, they were Christianizing at least, um, the Franks were Christian. Uh, in the 5th century the, um, the Alemanni remained uh, pagan and, and aside from a certain small infiltration of Christian elements uh, we don't have um, other evidences of of substantial of a substantial Christianization of the people before the the essentially the the end of the sixth and the beginning of the seventh century, um, and this, uh, as we were saying, tells much about the political horizons of the Alamanni, who probably thought themselves to be kind of apart from the the Roman system, and probably because traditionally they they had grown as uh, enemies of the Romans, because their confederation ha had always fought against the empire. And the Hanek, at a, a certain point, they, they, they had to choose where to which field to stay in, they preferred to stay with the Hans. So all choices that, that probably affected this, um, uh, this attitude, this, this behavior. Um, yet, it's very fascinating to say that um, the um, the Agri de Cumatus, so the region where they had settled, were a strongly Romanized area. And and, and there is, uh, at the level of customs of, of, of daily life, um, seemingly a great uh, Romanization of the Alamanni. They started to live in the Roman um, buildings, they started to wear uh, in the Roman fashion. Women, especially more than men, um, were extremely sensible to Roman to Roman uh, clothes, um, and um, and therefore, and, and it was obvi obviously also the uh, coexistence with with a Romanized population into these areas. So uh, it's kind of as if they they wanted to remain a bit on their own. And from what we can spot in terms of what influences they had, uh, as I was saying, we we can't distinguish the Alamanni from other peoples um, in terms of um, of material culture. But we can still see two major influences that are the Roman Mediterranean one in art that uh, 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 in a certain fashion influenced all the, the Germanic uh, arts um, at this point, but also the persistency of, um, of, a Scandinav of a southern Scandinavian influence that really tells you the fact that even if these people were migrating southwards, they always re retained a great uh, bond with the um, the origins of uh, of their Scandinavian origins uh, as Germans, and this is um, actually demonstrated by a, a microscopical quantity of evidence, um, not just by this. Um, this happened for for many. Uh, let's say that there was a German dimension that kind of never died out. Um, there was always the memory of the or the Scandinavian origin, the the idea that the the, uh, the Germans all came from there, N and certain defeated uh, confederations or tribes that didn't make it at a point, like the Eruli, for instance. Uh, we know that when they were defeated, um, maybe after even having stayed for uh, for for centuries in in central or southern Europe, they would 
move back to Scandina Scandinavia or the Baltic or the North Seas um, and to meaning how strong the the contact between all this Germanic world beyond the Roman borders was always felt um, even in very deep in time very 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 late in time um, and the Alamanni um, 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 mm, were kind of one of the, those confederations who, who made it uh, in a certain sense because they they survived for instance the Western Roman Empire um, they had quite considerable uh, a quite a considerable amount of uh, amount of territory in two areas that were also as we've seen quite Romanized were um, they, they, they were along the Rhine uh, the Danube they uh, they were across this um, world mm, of the Acre, the Cumates and gold that were rather fertile lands uh, that basic uh, that also favored their sedentarization um, it's important that the Germans um, began to sedentarize at this point because there are certain technological advances but generally speaking they 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 still tended to to move towards the the, uh, the the lands of the former Roman Empire because the Roman Empire had expanded up to um, you know it was possible to sustain a sedentary uh, civilization it's not that the Germans in Germany had were semi nomadic because they had fun um, running around it's it's just that they didn't have the environmental conditions and material uh, possibilities to to sustain um, something greater than, than a village. During the migration era this starts to change, especially there is a lot of um, 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 uh, a lot of um, of, uh, of, of the economy um, based on livestock, m farm animals that began to uh, to sub to, to, to make up uh, uh, a, a bit more consistently the Germanic economy compared to the previous centuries in which the Germans were considerably poor even than that um, <coughs> but uh, let's say that uh, at this point uh, settling into a sanitarized society was the best way to to put roots in there and and the Alemanni had quite of a of a position in here especially um, up to the point that the um, the Franks um, were still also in the same situation across the, the Rhine um, um, and, um, and you can argue that the Alemanni had had been for a certain time the rivals of the Franks not just because they had chosen a different ground to stand in uh, relatively to with respect to, to the Roman Empire but also because they were bordering and also because they were together with the Burgundians at the gates of Gaul or even with a with a foot uh, already um, 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 placed uh, place in it and Gaul was obviously a very big prize but uh, um, the Romans hadn't given it up so easily and even after the fall of Western Roman Empire um, uh, there was the ten re real, uh, year rule of the Roman commander uh, Siagrius who was technically also, uh, um, um, he was not Roman by birth he was also one of the federati but he had managed to create a realm so called at least into um, roughly uh, northern France uh, it, it's often called uh, the kingdom of Soissons um, and 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 um, in, in after um, in uh, 486 the realm of Siagrius was destroyed by the Franks who invaded therefore a huge area from the, the stretch from the river Loire to um, to the previous Frankish um, domains that uh, stretched up to the Skeld River uh, across the Rhine so um, a hugely um, fertile land because it's crossed by many rivers uh, with very fertile grounds etc and the Alemanni at that point uh, enter in contrast with the Franks um, because the Franks are this major power now telling the truth um, 
um, they they kind of attack each other at the same, not really at the same time, but you know, they, they were kind of understanding they would have to take out one another if they wanted to um, to survive. Um, and um, and at this point, um, the um, this pressure represented by the Franks um, is witnessed in, in the Alemannic world by the creation of a king. Now, up to that point, the Alemanni hadn't uh, appointed a king, because appointing a king in the Germanic world was a c uh, quite a of an exceptional um, event. Um, if you take the, the same name of the Alamanni, which is just uh, a, a surname, probably in their perspective, most of them kept them, um, themselves to to um, kept to to conceive themselves as Swabians. So their their uh, older uh, ethnic um, name. Uh, they had called Alemanni because it was a name that stressed the equality of the tribes that made part of uh, that made up that confederation. Alemanni um, is uh, a Latinization of a Germanic term that be that basically means literally all the men. So stressing the idea that the man in the Germanic world is the freeman. Uh, is the free warrior that um, and and saying all the men at this point means you know all uh, a, f a free body of of free men uh, uh, and warriors that decides to stay together as essentially uh, um, uh <laughs> um, a military a political and military uh, for a military political um, enterprise and uh, and yet there was no king uh, actually we we don't really know um, historically who ruled within the Alemannic world we don't even know pretty much which was th the actual state of freemen because um, there was always a certain degree of, of social segmentations into these confederations not because they absorbed a lot of um, of, um, of serfs and slaves from other submitted tribes but also because within the same freemen there were obviously the, the, aristocr uh, the aristocrats and then the, the, the other men. Probably the Alemanni in my opinion were were a quite functional system, probably up to uh, or shortly up to their their end as uh, as an independent confederation, um, which is suggested at least by their their military um, prowess uh, in many ways. It's possible that their national cohesion was higher uh, during uh, the first um, centuries more than when they began to clash with the Franks because they um, they fought um, um, uh, they, they fought frequently they probably had a good military average um, and and also considering the fact that they got defeated quite often by the Romans and, and yet they were capable of, s of striking back in some way uh, a, a time after time, and that probably tells you that they were a qu a quite resourceful people. Also, um, they had a considerable demographic strength to sustain those losses, because we maybe had the impression that the Germans were this kind of human avalanche that that submerged the empire, but it wasn't really like that. You know, the, the empire was depopulated, and the Germans weren't really many in absolute terms that weren't enough to put the, 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 the Roman Empire in trouble because of that, but a single defeat could really, uh, was something considerably uh, dangerous, because maybe in, in one defeat, if all the men got slaughtered, there, there was no, um, afterwards the, the, there was no uh, demographic consistency aside from the uh, the the, al uh, the old men, the, the, do the, the, the women and children, you know, usually the, the weaker entities got um, um, conquered by other confederations and mixed into them. Um, otherwise, they were <laughs> absorbed by the Romans. In any case, that equated to slavery um, in some form. Um, so um, the Alemanni probably had a quite strong, um, uh, a quite strong. Mm, uh, were a quite strong ensemble um, around the third and fourth century. By the fifth century, probably they began to to weaken a little bit. Uh, they didn't wage much war. 
um, they uh, kind of probably largely sedentarized they began to to, uh, to to have another lifestyle that probably even pushed them not to be extremely you know keen on warfare um, like it had happened it, it and would have happened for all the other Germanic tribes that became sedentary. So the clash with the Franks is a very painful one for the Alamanni. Um, uh, who get defeated uh, famously by Clovis um, by um, w w uh, at, at, at the Battle of Tolbiac which was fought, we don't know whether in 496 or 97 um, and they basically lost uh, their uh, independ independence they, they were um, they, they were subjected to the Franks um, and, and what is important is that m when fighting with the Franks um, they had elected a king so they had decided to entrust the the guide of the um, of, of the war to um, um, a chief that might have maybe um, evolved into something more like a monarch but generally speaking the Alemanni were not really a kingdom as such they weren't um, um, describable as, as such however they fought against the Franks F first of all with the requiring Franks of Sigebert then after with Clovis they were defeated um, and there was actually another um, battle that uh, was fought in, in 507, if I'm not wrong, which they probably, I, I don't remember, but I think they rose against, uh, once again against the, um, uh, the, the Franks, because you don't have to think that, uh, you know, it was easy even for a victorious um, um, entity like the Franks to, to, to keep an entire people under their uh, their command these were kind of largely um, nominal submissions that most of all reflected the um, the immediate weakness that could follow to to a defeat but uh, in, f in 506 um, the um, the uh, the Franks uh, managed even to kill the so-called Rex Alamannorum in Latin, which means uh, the king of the Alamanni, so really behating the uh, uh, you know the Alamanni, politically spe and militarily speaking. And um, from this time onwards, basically uh, the Alamanni weaken as a system, as a group, and they probably also changed their ethnic uh, and geographical uh, connotation in many ways because. Um, first of all, um, after the, Fra the defeat against the Franks, the Alemanni split in two, seemingly. One side uh, was um, mostly in the areas of Alsace, in the most... Um, um, uh, in the plains, let's say, in the flatlands, um, were easily um, controlled by the Franks. The Alaman instead uh, settled into the Alpa, uh, the, uh, the Swiss plateau, um, asked uh, to uh, come under the uh, the, dom the Ostrogothic domination of Italy, being from the other side of the Alps. But still, you know, the Ostrogoths uh, in Italy at this point were very strong. They they were uh, enemies of the Franks, or at least they they didn't. Uh, conceive each other very favorably, but they were extremely influential, Strogotic Italy being the most powerful Romano-Germanic entity at that time, and even having uh, made um, Visigothic Spain a sort of, uh, of client state uh, that surrounded basically the, the Franks at that point. Um, and therefore the, the, the this kind of Swiss Alamanni um, kind of dwelt for, 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 for some time into under the Ostrogothic protection. However, um, the, the crisis of the, of the Ostrogothic kingdom arrives with the Byzantine invasion of Belisarius, so the Ostrogothic um, king Vitages, in, uh, if I'm not wrong, 536, accepted the Alemannic um, uh, population of, of Switzerland to pass um, under the un under Frankish um, domination in exchange of a 
of the absence of a Frankish intervention into the uh, the war against the Byzantines in Italy. Um, and um, I'm, I'm not really sure whether the uh, the I will have to to check the, uh, this um, the part of the so-called uh, Swabians um, 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 arrived. Um, no, well, forget about this. Um, w w what what I just wanted to say is that the Alemanni at this point get fully absorbed into the Frankish, uh, the so-called Merovingian Empire. Uh, we can't call that empire because essentially, if you look at the map, the Franks ruled this mm, area of northern Europe um, on on the Channel, essentially. And from there, submitted all a series of peoples uh, uh, that inhabited in regions like the Alamannia, in fact, so the lands of the Alamanni, the Burgundians, uh, and, and Aquitaine that had been um, won uh, to the to the to the Visigoths. Uh, and therefore, from from the north, the Franks and the Merovingian dynasty that had centralized everything by slaughtering even the, the same Frankish. Um, noblemen ruled like uh, an empire. This uh, uh, this group, the Franks, had brutally changed at this point because of the Merovingians. Because I even the Franks, like the Alamanni, uh, stressed with their um, confederative ethnonym the idea of being free. Because Frank means free, um, and and the Merovingians instead basically s by slaughtering. <laughs> Um, the wall of uh, Frankish nobility, uh, they managed to, to, to centralize um, these, um, the Frankish people around uh, under their rule and by uh, building up a, a monarchic model that will be extremely important even for the further developments of the Frankish uh, monarchy in, in Carolingian times. Um, by transforming, therefore, uh, what was a uh, relatively egalitarian Germanic culture into uh, a kingdom, a, qui a quite verticized kingdom. Um, and the Alemanni being part of, of, um, of their domains, um, surviving as, um, as the land of the Alemanni, which means that within the Merovingian Empire the Alemanni still retained a certain um, autonomy, an autonomy that was granted in essentially in exchange obviously of uh, of remaining faithful to the Mer Merovingian rule uh, which could pass through um, the um, the collaboration between the Alemannic uh, aristocracy and the uh, Merovingian rule. Um, just like the Romans had done uh, in order to control a people you don't control the single clans that make up this world but you tend to put in charge certain you know, um, a ruling class that has interest maybe even to enter into the Merovingian system with marriages and stuff like that and that can uh, in this clientary society essentially control all, all the guys who are uh, at the bottom. Uh, and this is what happened. Obviously, the, as you know, the Merovingian um, Empire had um, kind of a crisis at a certain point because by the uh, already by the end of the 6th century um, things starts to, to, to get pretty chaotic the, the Franks um, divided at the, at the paternal uh, heritage uh, among all the, uh, the male sons so this means that at, at every generation the, uh, even if the kingdom was unitary it split into uh, as many <laughs> um, princes there, there had been up to that point and, uh, and this brings basically the Mer Merovingian Empire to turn into a series of uh, small kingdoms that fought each other con constantly and as a consequence all the various peripheral um, entities like the Alamanni, the Burgundians etc um, gained autonomy and obviously also played into the game uh, even though not from a condition of force because the, the Franks still in spite of divided, they still inhabited the most um, productive lands, they had the stronger military, etc. Um, the Alemanni at this point, as I was saying, they, they had no head, um, substantially. So, 
what they transform themselves into is this kind of decentralized um, how do we not want to call them the uh, the barbarians were called were were at the head of a duchy um, uh, normally and the Alamanni were something extremely similar eventually in post Carolingian times even uh, Alamannia became a duchy the duchy of Swabia um, so and being north of the Alps they 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 didn't uh, they usually played with uh, who was, was ruling in Italy um, was usually a major force like the the Ostrogoths or the Longobards uh, especially afterwards who could kind of protect them and and try to keep them out to 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 take them out of the Frankish uh, sphere. The Alamanni weren't um, couldn't play that excessively because the the Franks were just across their the border of their lands for the barbarians is what it was much easier but we know of uh, contacts between um, Alamannic Swabia and Longobard Italy through the Alps this time there were quite intense relations um, but that never turned into uh, an actual um, uh, you know uh, chance for the Alamanni to 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 the to the to exit the the, <laughs> the Merovingian Empire and uh, and even in Carolingian times that did not happen um, and in Carolingian times although obviously the Alamanni had diluted also you know with this aristocracy that was Franco Alamannic essentially at that point they kind of began to 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 rise and to 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 not to be so tolerant towards the Frankish uh, rule uh, and therefore at a point they did something for which they paid quite dearly that is they rebelled to the son of um, of Charles Martel uh, Carloman who basically um, invited all the Alemannic aristocracy um, into the th what is known the blood court at Kernstadt uh, Kernstadt better in German and um, Carloman had all the Alemannic uh, aristocracy slaughtered. So this means that uh, Alemannia was ruled uh, from that time onwards uh, by a Frankish ar uh, purely Frankish aristocracy. Yet um, Alemannia as such remained culturally as something divided from the rest of the Frankish uh, domains and in post Carolingian times it became, um, as we were saying, a duchy on its own. That would make, uh, by the way, part of the, uh, of the east uh, eastern Frankish kingdom, and 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 therefore uh, uh, to to the kingdom of Germany in the high in the high Middle Ages. And this is important because the Alemannic identity is something that still uh, survives into the language spoken in southwestern Germany. Uh, which is a language that seemingly uh, share has a lot of in common with Bavarian as well, the other south uh, southern German language, and even if um, it is now extinct, um, um, it seemingly the Langobard uh, language was quite similar to the Alemannic one. Um, so there were probably certain um, cultural bridges between this northern Italian and southern German world that mm, that probably survived in, in a certain sense. The Alps especially within the Alpine valleys there were certain um, um, languages that um, survived during through the millennia um, up to a, s a, a relatively short time ago that were extremely reminiscent of the high German uh, language of those times and uh, and 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 therefore this is a region of Europe that still maintains you know a, a legacy that derives from the Alemannia from other similar peoples um, I personally love uh, the dynasties of the Hohenstaufen uh, of the Habsburgs and of even of the Hohenzollern which in incidentally came all from the lands of Swabia that were the ones that had been ruled by the Alamanni. Um, the name of Swabia, by the way, is, is exchangeable as we were saying because uh, 
seemingly the Alemanni called still themselves Swabians all along and in fact the Duchy of Swabia was created because it was mm, more or less the, the same exact um, territory that had been inhabited by the Alemanni, the territory in their, their languages, their traditions, etc. Uh, regarding to the Christianization, yeah, they, they were Christianized essentially f starting from the very end uh, of the 6th and the beginning of the 7th century by St. Columban. This is also very important because St. Columban at this point w was also pretty much in contact with the Longobard court of Pavia and uh, had been given famously the Abbey of, of, Bo of, of Bobbio as a gift. So in, in here also the relation with the Longobards shouldn't be overlooked. And, um, and and uh, and it's from that point onwards that the, the Alamanni starts uh, start quite late for the Germanic standards of the West at that point to to Christianize, mm -hmm. and you can see that because the traditional uh, Longobard burials have uh, excuse me the uh, traditional Alamannic burials I o I have my mind fixed on the Longobards now. Um, um began exactly from from that age to to have um certain crosses uh certain golden crosses sometimes on the bodies of the buried uh it's quite fascinating and, and previously to that um um the uh, the Alemanni have had burials uh, similar to the ones of other germanic peoples like the franks or the goths or the longbirds with the dead um, laying um, with their feet um, uh, essentially uh, placed uh, east so that theoretically the the dead one day would have woken up watching the sun in his face which is a beautiful thing um, and uh, and that was maintained at a certain point even after the Christianization so it wasn't just a pagan belief but even you know the Christians normally prayed facing the east because Jerusalem was was there and then the, the sun I mean there is a lot of syncretism obviously the sun symbolizing Christ etc and the rebirth uh, after that of course um, and, um, and and it's interesting because the Alamanni here um, keep um, having um, um, normally w there is a there is a, there is a, uh, an element when the uh, that that um, that always happen normally happens um, with the um, after the Christianization of the Germanic peoples is that they stop putting um, patrimony or endowment into their graves um, because obviously the Christian idea is that you don't have to remain attached to earthly goods so it's useless for you to, to carry them in your grave because you will be resuscitated at the end of time and uh, your soul and your body is all you, you, you will need at that point um, and normally when, uh, when the um, Germans got Christianized what you see is that it's, it's, it's actu actually a great loss for, for um, from an archaeological point of view because they stopped burying material that otherwise would have come to us. The Longobards, for instance, it's uh, the mid of the 7th century that completely lose the, um, the tradition of burying uh, uh, stuff in, in graves um, because they're fully Christianized at that point. Uh, the Alemanni instead start only to this point. Um, at this point, uh, first of all, of being Christianized and they still uh, don't abandon the tradition of essentially putting uh, their their trousseau within their graves f f up to the, the high middle ages essentially so that tells you even here uh, between you know the two sides of the Alps how things were different in in, in, in contemporary times uh, depending on the actual tr um, in cultural influences that existed in those areas so, wow, I talked a lot about uh, the Alamanni, I don't know how much. There would be a lot of things to say more about the Alamanni. Um, and I will in the future, I promise. But uh, yeah, this wanted just to be an introduction, so I hope it worked. So 
I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please share it, otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel to receive further contents. Um, and uh, as, uh, as always, uh, I thank you very much for listening, I wish you a nice time and see you next time, bye!